Hey, this is Rob, and I'm going to show you how to use Fusion 360 to make a laser friction fitting gauge. That's what this person on Thingiverse calls it, but basically it's just a piece of material that we cut on the laser cutter, and it has different size slots, so we can grab some material, put it into one of those slots, and see how it fits. Maybe we want it to fit really tightly or loosely, depending on what the uh, kind of connection we're trying to make is. So uh, if this fit like we wanted it to, then we could just go back to our drawing program, whatever it is, in this case Fusion 360, and just use 6.25 as our dimension. It's not enough to just measure this material, say it's point, say it's 6.25 millimeters, and assume that drawing it at that size would make the kind of connection we want. Uh, it's likely that this slot is actually slightly different than 6.25 because um, when the laser cuts, cuts it out, there is some kerf to the laser, meaning that there's, the laser has a bit of a width to it, so it's probably slightly larger. So it's good to have a guide like this that we can just go back to and um, test the material with. So uh, in this case, they also engraved uh, space where you can write the speed and power that you use to cut through this material and the number of passes. In our case, we'd probably put uh, at, at FSU and in, in our uh, the art department fab lab, we have two laser cutters, so maybe there's a, a space here to say which laser cutter you used. Um, and uh, you know, a hole up here so you can put them all together on a key ring for all different materials, different thicknesses of materials. So we'll make this, I'll make a scaled down version that just has um, a space for what what is an eighth of an inch, which is uh, 3.175 millimeters. I'll stick in millimeters even though you could do this in decimal inches, but I'll, I'll put uh, 3.175 millimeters and then I'll go up and down uh, a bit. So I'll have five slots, each of them 0.25 millimeters away from the previous one, just because that's how they this person did it. Okay, so the way I do this is to start, start uh, creating a sketch on the top work plane, and I'll make a two-point rectangle of just some arbitrary size, it doesn't matter, and then I'll make what is going to be my first slot. And you can see it added some constraints here, uh, horizontal and vertical, it did the same thing for this rectangle. Um, because I made a rectangle and because I made it horizontal and vertical, it added them for me. But I'm going to have to add some constraints of my own. Some of those will be dimensions like this. So I'll start out with uh, 3.175 millimeters as my width. Um, I think it would be nice to uh, constrain the height here of, or the, the depth of my um, of my slots. So let's make this... 15 millimeters deep. Okay, and um, you know I said it should it would be nice to do it, but really it's more than nice. What we really want is to have a, a sketch that is fully constrained. So right now I could do some weird things like well I can definitely move it side to side. So there isn't a constraint keeping that from happening. Uh, there also isn't a constraint keeping it from ending up like this. So that's obviously not what we want. So what's missing there is another dimension that says the distance from there to there should be one millimeter. So now I can't move it uh, vertically anymore. But I can still move it side to side, so I'd need another constraint there. And what what's happening is as I add, um, it, uh, <laughs> let me stop for a second. This can be really frustrating to make dimensions if you don't understand how this works. So if I click dimension, and sometimes I just hit the D key, you can see that's the shortcut, uh, you can click a, an, a line, click another line, and make a dimension between them. If, however, you already have uh, a, something selected when you click dimension, now it's it's already selected that first one. So you need to click the second one. So it's worth knowing. Otherwise, you can be really frustrated with dimensioning. If uh, if nothing's selected, then you'd click each of them. And I'll put five millimeters here. But if you have one selected, then you know it's already started by the time you hit the D. Okay, so at this point, it looks mostly constrained. Now, I can actually, I'm going to show you this feature. If you go up to your username and hit Preferences on the Preview tab, there's this thing that says Sketch, Color Sketch Geometry Based on Constraint Status. So what I want is for it to show me where I'm uh, fully constrained and where I'm not. So you can't probably tell in the video, but these lines are all black, and this line and this line are blue. And what that's telling me is that these lines aren't constrained yet. A fully constrained model would be all black, which is what we want. So I'm going to just add a couple more constraints here and say, for example, uh, this the distance from there 
to there should be uh, 20 millimeters and now it turned black. Uh, this is a great feature, it's still in preview so I don't know if it's totally reliable but I think it, it seems to be working. So um, I'll not worry about this one for a second, I'll show you why because, well the reason why is because I don't know where it should land, right? I haven't made my five slots yet. What I'm going to do to make the extra slots is just highlight, uh, hit copy, command C, and command V for paste. Let's try that again. I don't know what happened there. So I'm going to highlight these and if I miss some of these constraints or dimensions I'll just hold down shift and click them. Uh, I don't care about that one but uh, I'll hit command C and then command V to paste and I'll move this one over 10 millimeters or so. It doesn't matter right now and uh, you'll notice that some of the constraints didn't come over. That 15 millimeter uh, depth of the slot didn't come over and also this one millimeter up there didn't come over. So um, I'll, I'll fix that afterward. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll just copy and paste, add another one, and hit OK. I'll add two more so I can finish up. Copy, paste, and there we go. So now I need to add con some constraints to get this all organized again. You can see all these new ones are blue. So um, the first thing is, uh, can I say what the distance between here and here should be? And so I'll just, well, you know what? I'm going to start using some parameters. So first of all, the depth. Maybe, um, maybe I'd like the depth to change. If I start making these uh, all, OK, so there are a couple ways I could do this. So I could add a parameter that's, that's called my height. So let's try that. So let's call this slot depth. And I'll make it 15 millimeters. I'll hit OK, and what that means is here I could put slot depth. And anytime I go into the parameters and change it, maybe to 10, it'll change the depth of the slot. But I'd like to change all of them. So there are a couple ways I could do that. I could go in and actually make all of these dimensions. But maybe an easier way is instead of using dimensions as the constraint, I can actually use the uh, collinear constraint. Uh, probably other ways to do this too. So I'm going to say this line needs to be collinear with this line. And this one should be collinear with that one, and so on. So this means no matter what that first one uh, changes to, all the others will also line up with it. Same here. Right now, I can accidentally do that. So what I should do instead is uh, use the collinear constraint. That's already highlighted, so I'll click this one. Click there and there, there and... Oh, hold on. It's not actually doing it. So I, I didn't see the glyphs showing up, so let me try that again. Collinear from there. That one should be collinear to that one. And so on. Okay. So I think I think that's good. Uh, and now if I look, there's still some blue lines. Obviously, this is uh, not constrained because we don't have a distance between these. So let me add some distance from here to here. Maybe this is another opportunity to um, to use a, a parameter. So I'll add a parameter that's like slot spacing. And I'll say that should be six, seven millimeters. Slot distance, what I called it, slot spacing. OK, same here. here and here. Okay, this line's still blue and that's because it's not constrained at all. I want the distance from here to here to be five millimeters, just like the other side. Okay, everything's black. That means the model's fully constrained or that the sketch is fully constrained. I'm going to clean this up a little bit so that it's readable everywhere. And I think we're all set. Now, there are a couple things. I'm actually going to make a circle down here. And that's blue because I don't have a dimension for it. So I'll hit D and say it's supposed to be 5 millimeters. And I also need a dimension to keep it in place so, uh, so it can't be dragged around. So let's say this is supposed to be 6 millimeters over. And then it's also supposed to be 6 millimeters up. 
Okay, so I'm mostly done. The only thing that's obviously missing is that the slot widths are all the same and they're not supposed to be. So this is a really great place to use um, the parameters. So I'll hit change parameters again. I'll call this start and that's the number of millimeters that I want to start at 3.175. And maybe uh, I need an increment, right? So um, 0.25, I'll call it increment. 0.25 millimeters. Okay, so this first one should be uh, start. This next one will be start plus increment. The next one will be start plus increment times two. And here, this will be start minus increment and start minus increment times two. Okay. The reason why we're doing this is because at any point I could just decide that I want this gauge to be a different scale. So by changing that number to 3, all of them have updated. Maybe I don't want it to go by 0.25 millimeter, I want it to go by 0.1 millimeter. So you can see everything adjusts and also the size of the outer rectangle adjusts. This is kind of amazing and this is what parametric modeling does for us. So let's say we start again with 3.175, but we want the spacing between them to be 10 millimeters everything adjusts without breaking because the model is fully constrained. Okay. Uh, well, actually, that's that's not... I, I think I do want it 0.25, so I'll go back to that. Okay. At this point, I'm going to stop the sketch. It would be nice if I could add the uh, dimensions here and my spaces for uh, speed percentage and, and uh, power percentage, but I'm going to have to do that later, even though there's a sketch text option it doesn't it won't actually export it uh, in a way that we can use for the laser cutter so let's just stop here and my next step at this point would be uh, to create a second sketch that will be the one that I export I can right click on this sketch hit save as DXF and export it for use with the laser cutter but it'll include things like these extra lines that I don't want if I had any construction lines in here those would get included as as regular lines so it's not ideal be nice if those didn't show up, but at, at, right now, the way the software works, they, they do show up. So um, what I'll do is uh, I'm going to actually press pull this to make sure I've got the thing that I want, and that is the thing I want. That's exactly what I want laser cut. So I will now create a sketch on the surface of this body I just made, and I'm not going to draw anything. I'll just hit stop sketch. So what that's done is just made a sketch that is exactly this, the the size, uh, it's kind of a, a copy of my body. So uh, if you look at it, that's it. It doesn't have the extra lines, it's just got the parts we're interested in. I'll right click on this, and you know, at this point I probably call this like laser DXF or something. And uh, that'll let me know that this is the one that I export uh, for the laser cutter. Of course, if I go back into the sketch and change something, um, it'll be reflected in that other sketch. Um, we can see right now even outside of the sketch, if I change one of these numbers, like slot depth becomes 14, the body updates, and of course if the body updates, then my laser DXF also updates. It's kind of amazing. So I'm going to uh, export this now. Right click on it, hit save as DXF, and I'll just save it on the desktop, untitled. I'll go over to Illustrator, and this is super important. When I open that file, I need to make sure the scale is right. If I leave it at scale 100%, it'll be wrong. And um, if I if I choose one inch, one unit equals one inch, that's the problem because I didn't make my model in inches. If you did, then that this would work fine. But what we need is for one unit to equal one millimeter. Very important. There it is. Now, to prepare this for our universal laser cutter, the process for the Trotec laser is a little bit different, so I'm just going to stick with the universal laser. There are a couple things we need to do. All of the lines have to be 0 .001 points. And if I want them to cut out, I need the stroke to be red. First thing to do, actually, is to go up here and make sure the document color mode is RGB. And then I can change to red. So that's zero green, zero blue and 255 red. That's what this color should be. Hit OK. 
and that's it. This would cut out on the laser cutter. It'll actually follow all of these lines because they're vectors. It'll cut them all out and we'd be done. Of course, we're missing the dimensions and any other text we want to have on here. So I'll show you really quickly two different ways that you can do that and you'll have to decide which you want to do. So if I make some text here, let's say uh, 3.175, make it a bit smaller and uh, I can maybe I'll just rotate it a bit and uh, put it here. I do the other ones, I put speed and power, whatever else I want to put. Uh, I can also put a, a logo or I can put a, a photograph across the whole thing, whatever you want to do. Anytime you have things that are black or gray so a photograph could be a uh, grayscale, it would have blacks and grays in it. The black is where it's going to engrave the deepest. Lighter colors of gray, lighter shades of gray will engrave less. So this is called rastering. Anytime it encounters this black using, using the universal laser, anytime it encounters this black, it's going to take a different approach. It's not going to actually trace out 3175. It's going to kind of scan across and engrave it. That's called rastering versus vector cuts, which uh, it will actually follow the lines. So you can leave it like this and you can go to the laser cutter and it'll do both processes separately. Uh, the Trotec laser does this engraving process really fast. Uh, it's good at it. It takes longer on the universal laser. Uh, it's worth knowing. Another way you can do this is to um, instead on the universal, let's say you wanted to make, make life a little shorter, uh, make your cutting process a little shorter, instead of having it be a black lines, um, you can uh, I can create outlines from here and those now are actually vector lines instead of being just um, text so I can click on those change the uh, stroke weight to 0 0.001 so it's just like I was going to cut it right so I would make the fill uh, empty and if I leave it red, it'll actually cut all the way through, which is not what I want, especially if you had like a zero, it would end up just being a hole. So I'm gonna change the color to blue, and uh, that means zero red, zero green, and 255 blue. If you do that, sorry, try that again. If you do that, by default, the uh, universal laser treats blue lines as um, basically just less power than the red. So this will uh, go through the same vector process of following all these lines, but it'll be with much less power and it will cut all the way through. So those are the two ways that you can add uh, text. Obviously, if you had a photograph, you wouldn't be able to take this approach. You'd have to, you'd have, to have it included as a black and white uh, image or black, white, grayscale image, and uh, the laser will raster it out. So uh, I'm sure we'll see people doing it both ways, and um, uh, hopefully we'll see people doing different scales, different numbers, different types of materials that you find hanging around in the lab. Um, I have some materials for you to cut, but uh, any scraps would work out too. You could also make this circular or octagonal with the slots in all directions. Anything that you do in that way will, I'm, I'm totally 100% can guarantee that it will uh, give you a lot more experience in sketching in Fusion 360. Um, so it, can, it can get kind of complicated and that's good. This is the, one of the purposes of us doing this. The other is so that we have this usable reference to move forward on the project. So let me know if you have any questions and that's it.